The system is out of GPU memory. If you are a Blender artist, you probably came across this problem at least once in a lifetime. This is a very common problem. It means that your graphics card doesn't have enough memory to handle the scene that you are trying to render. I personally have been dealing with this problem back in the days when I was rendering my renders on my first GPU, which was the 1050 with 2 gigabytes of RAM. But now the question is, can you do something about it? Of course you can. In fact, you can do a lot of things inside the Blender scene to optimize the scene for the rendering. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you today. So let's go to the video. So the first thing that you can do about this is to reduce the render resolution. Now I get it. I know that this is something that you probably didn't want to hear from me. However, the resolution is probably the biggest factor when it comes to this issue. For instance, let's say you are rendering in 4K. If you drop the resolution to full HD, you will use only one fourth of the computational power of your GPU. And don't get me wrong, like you can still make renders in 4K, but if you are working with a laptop, which is not even made for 3D graphics, then you will probably have a hard time to render even one image in Ultra HD resolution. If you really want to render your scene in 4K, you at least need a good GPU and a lot of RAM memory. And if you don't, Today we have a lot of free online AI tools that can upscale your renders even to like 8k so I wouldn't really think about this. It's just your GPU is not capable to actually get over this processing power. So you need to come with alternative options. The second thing you can do is to reduce the polygon. The amount of polygons in your scene highly correlates with the processing power of your GPU that is required to render the scene. So if you are for example using a subdivision surface modifier, one of the things that you can do is to switch the feature set to experimental and then if you go back to the modifier you will see that there is one more option that wasn't there before called adaptive subdivision and if you enable this feature blender will dynamically adjust the amount of polygons based on where your camera is to make the details pop up in the foreground which also means that blender will use fewer polygons in the background because since the area is out of focus you don't even need that many polygons anyway alternatively you can use modifiers like decimate modifier or the remesh modifier which will allow you non-destructively reduce the poly count of your object. The next thing that you can do is to set the correct style size. If you are rendering with cycles, chances are that your GPU can render the image, however it might not be able to render the whole image at once. So what you can do instead is divide the render area into sections, which will basically allow you to render the scene with much less computational power. You can find this setting in the render properties in the performance section. So now the question is, what style size should I use? This depends if you are using your CPU or your GPU for rendering. If you are rendering primarily with your GPU, which I guess you are, the bigger tile size you have, the faster the rendering will generally be. However, if you make the tile too big, you may run into the exact issue which we are trying to avoid, and that is that you will run out of the GPU memory. If you are rendering with your CPU, then it is the exact opposite. The smaller tile, the faster the rendering will be. Now, if you still don't know what tile size you should choose, I would generally recommend you to use the range from 210 50 to 1000 pixels, which at least for me is the ideal tile size. Number 5. Use persistent data. This is very important, especially if you are doing animations. Let's say that your animation is 200 frames long. The way how Blender renders each frame is that it recalculates lighting, it recalculates shaders, it recalculates textures, and it puts all this data into the RAM memory. Blender will basically keep the data between renders, which also means that it doesn't have to preload the information with each new frame that is being rendered. Give it a try, it's a game changer. The next step is to simplify textures. A lot of time people are using very high resolution textures in their renders for basically no reason. I mean, I understand that you want to have as much as detail as possible, but the problem with such high resolution textures is that they will consume a lot of space on your RAM memory. For example, if you use an 8K texture instead of 2K texture, you will also use a 16 times more memory, which is pretty insane. And as I said before, often you don't even need that much detail. The use of RAM will basically skyrocket exponentially. And the easiest way how you can simplify textures is to click on the simplify button in the render properties, and then adjusting the resolution both for the render and for the viewport. Just in case if you would like to have a smoother and faster rendering performance in the viewport. Next, clean up unused data. You need to understand that everything that is in the Blender file will be essentially calculated in the render. Often when you have a large project, you also have a lot of unused data blocks, a lot of unused textures, or even unused 3D models. Now even though you are not using these assets in your renders, they are still a part of the Blender file, and they are still consuming a lot of memory. So in this case, if you can't render the scene, it's probably not that your GPU can't render the scene, but it's because you are using too much unused data in your Blender project. 
that your GPU just can't handle it. And the fastest way how you can clean up your project from unwanted data files is by going to File, Clean Up and click on Purge or Delete Unused Data. Another thing that you can do about this is that you can enable both GPU and CPU in the render devices. Usually when you are using only the GPU for the rendering, the rendering will be probably faster. However, if you also enable the CPU render device as well, the rendering will be more stable. And the last thing that you can do is that when you are running a simulation, like cloud physics, rigid body, fluid or smoke, make sure to bake the physics before you actually render it, so that your computer doesn't have to recalculate the simulation for each frame which will drastically slow down the process and consume so much RAM memory. And that is basically all from me today. I hope you liked the video. I also hope that after this video, you will never run out of GPU memory again. So if I helped you, subscribe. Also check out my Shade Guard library, which is my newest asset pack for Blender with 87 procedural materials. You can make infinite variations. You can customize your material as you like. And because the materials are three dimensional, most of the time you don't even need to unwrap your object. So if you want to get it a shot, click on the first link in the description. And I will see you in the next video.